Hello, it's Rebecca here from Precious Pages Papercraft and today's layout is for Mixed Media Frenzy. And that's when a group of us get together every Friday and we choose a mixed media layout or sketch to use um, either as a scrap lift or inspiration and we all um, kind of recreate our own layout. So the layout we've chosen this week, I've just popped up in the top left corner for you. Lots of mixed media going on on this layout, um, which is of course what Mixed Media Frenzy is all about. So I've pulled out several of my Distress Inks and Oxides and I'm going to apply the colour on my background using a brayer. Um, it's quite a small brayer, I think it's uh, two or three inches this one, um, quite small. I didn't want to go with the big one because I wanted to get some narrow spots of colour as well. So I've put some Distress Oxide, this is chipped sapphire, on some packaging and I've watered it down ever so slightly. Um, just with a spray bottle there and it just makes it easier to apply and I'm just rolling my brayer across the page in different directions kind of mimicking the same colour pattern that they've got on the original. Now I haven't bothered using any gesso for this layout I'm not a massive fan of gesso I don't like how it warps my pages um, so this is just plain white smooth cardstock and I'm going straight on with the colour. So I started with Chip Sapphire, and then I came in with a Distress Ink in Dusty Concord, which is kind of a purple colour. Uh, now I'm going to add some splatters in blue. This is Stormy Sky, which is another Distress Ink. And again, just adding it to the packaging, spraying some water on it, and just using a paintbrush to add my splatters. And I do that in several colours. So this is the Chipped Sapphire Distress Oxide again. I think I add some of the purple Dusty Concord as well in a second. Shall see what I do next. I add quite a few different shades. So my photo's got lots of blues and kind of purples in the background. Oh no, it's not Stormy Sky. This is Faded Jeans, this one. So it's a Distress Ink. It's one of the mini ink pads in Faded Jeans. I'm just using the paper towel just to dry off the excess. Um, because I haven't got gesso, if I have too much water on my background, it will start warping and soaking through. So with things like splatters, I do like to soak up the excess with a paper towel. Now I want to add some texture paste. Um, I've got a Tim Holtz stencil here and I've got white texture paste and I'm using a black ink to color it, but I didn't want it to be sort of jet black. I wanted it more of a dark gray tone to match my photo. So I've used the Black Soot Distress Reinker and I've just added the tiniest amount to that white texture paste and just used a palette knife to mix it in. And then I've just spread it through my stencil in several areas. I've obviously let that dry off camera and also cleaned my stencil because, um, gosh, we've all made that mistake, haven't we, of cracking on with our layouts and not cleaning texture paste off our stencils. But that is one of my favorite stencils, so I had to make sure that one got cleaned. And then I've got another stencil here that's got loads of numbers and kind of punctuation marks all over it. On the original layout, they've got um, it looks like they've used a number stencil to add some detail. So I've done the same. I've used the chipped sapphire distress oxide for that and the blending brush and just you got the ink on the blending brush and in circular motions gone over the stencil and just brushed that ink through. I've gone heavier in some places than others on purpose to give it a bit more interest and depth. And now I'm just going to work on my photo. So this is a photo I've had for a few years now of my little boy. We did a photo shoot in our local um, shopping centre and I've never really found the right collection or colours to scrap with them. So they've been sat on my pile and I'm finally getting around to using them at the moment. So I've added a layer of white card behind it first and then I'm going to work on using up some scraps from my scrap box because it's getting a little bit out of hand. Uh, so this is a paper from Paige Evans Bloom Street collection. It's a lovely kind of greenish um, teal colour and there are hints of that in the background of my photo. So I wanted to bring a little bit of that colour in just to break up the blues and the purples. So I've used a layer of that behind my photo. And then in the original layout, they've, I think they've used a bigger photo than me. So I've used a three by four photo and they've got tags behind it and they're quite large tags, but I'm going to make mine smaller because I've got smaller photos. So I'm scaling everything down a little bit. And I've also scaled my mixed media down because I do like to have quite a bit of white space on my layouts if I can. 
So I'm just using a Simple Stories tag from one of the tags from the Christmas collection last year um, as a template just to draw around because I can never get my tags even. The corners are always uneven and I end up chopping at them, trying to get them even. And before you know it, my tag is tiny and just still not even. So I'm using this tag as a template. I'm using a couple of the other papers from the Bloom Street collection um, in tones of kind of blues and purples. And then I'm using, I've got a hole punch there that's kind of like um, a hole reinforcer punch by We Are Memory Keepers. And I'm just using that to um, make some hole reinforcers just to give the tags a bit more detail. I'm kind of trying to do it in contrasting colours so that um, they're a bit more noticeable. And I'm going to distress the edges of these tags. So I'm quite pleased that I've got a couple of um, scraps used up. I've still obviously got more to go, but it's um, rather than cutting into a new 12 by 12 sheet to create these tags, I've managed to use up some other bits. So I'm just going to decide where I want these tags to sit. And I've also got this um, pack of die cut banners here. So for my Paper Maze design team pack this month, I'm working with P13's Free Spirit collection. It's got some lovely colours in it, but this particular um, tag here, there's also a patterned paper in the collection, the same, works really well with the background of the photos, so they're like the backdrop that the photographers used. So I wanted to use one of these and turn it into a tag. So I just trimmed the corners off um, and punched a hole, and then I've just drawn black doodled lines around all of the tags just to give them a little bit extra detail. I was going to do it on my sewing machine, but I really just couldn't be bothered to get on my sewing machine out, if I'm honest, so I went with the black pen instead. I've brought in a couple of other bits, so I've got a couple of um, kind of die cuts here that I've got done with metal die, so I've got a butterfly and then kind of like a, a circular pattern. I just had half left over that I've obviously used before. Um, so again, just using up some bits from my stash, which is quite nice. And I'm just gonna layer those, the round one behind my photo and have the butterfly sitting on the corner. And I've also brought in a kind of turquoisey teal colored butterfly from an old Cocoa Vanilla collection. And um, again, just to bring in some hints of a kind of bluish green color to the layout. And I'm just adding some thin twine through all of my tags there, just tied it round in a bow just to bring a bit more texture to the, the page and a bit more interest and kind of something else to look at really. I'm not a massive fan of having tags with nothing through them. They just look really unfinished to me. So I'm threading some twine through and on the original they've threaded some thread through theirs as well. So just another nod to the original there. I've placed my tags in the same place as the original layout as well, so two at the top and one peeking out on the right hand side. But they've embellished really lightly with just the tags um, and a bit of what looks like corrugated card under the photo, but I wanted to bring in a few more little bits, which is why I've got these die cuts and that butterfly. And I've used um, an old kind of wood grain chipboard for my title, it says love ya. So that's going to be my title and I've placed it on the same position as the original as well. So I'm almost done. Um, on the original they have got a lot of detail around the edge of the page and I really liked that. And as much as I like white space on my layout, I did feel like the edge of my page needed something. So I'm going to get my inks back out and my briar again and I'm going to go around the edge of my layout with the same inks. So I'm using the chipped sapphire distress oxide and I think I also come in now, I don't know if I do actually, I might come in with a dusty concord, I can't remember. And I only created this layout last night so um, <laughs> it's amazing how you forget what you do overnight. We'll have to have a see what I do, maybe I just do the chipped sapphire. Yep, I do, just the chip sapphire. My um, chip sapphire distress ink is a lovely dark blue color, but I do find my distress oxide in the same shade has more of a purple hint to it, um, which is probably why I didn't bother with the dusty concord. So I've done that with a briar all the way around the edge and I'm coming back in with that number stencil and the um, blending brush and just adding some detail, just roughly, not perfect at all by any means. And I'm pressing again harder in some areas and lighter in others just to give it that kind of rustic, sort of grungy look about it. And again, just having a bit of a clean up. I like to clean as I go if I can. Can't stand working on a messy desk, it just drives me insane. 
Um, and now I'm bringing back in my inks and I'm gonna do some splatters around the edge of the page. So again, just watering those down. So I've used the Dusty Concord, the Chipped Sapphire and Faded Jeans. And I'm just adding splatters all the way around the outside edge, just for a bit more detail. And because I've got the kind of wood grain title in that one tag from the P13 collection of a totally different colour to anything else on the layout, I felt like some gold splatters would be a nice way to kind of tie it all together. So I've got a metallic gold acrylic paint that I just water down and I use that for splatters. It's really shiny when it's dried. I really love using that one. Then I've got a couple of leaf sprigs here. These are from a uh, Vicky Bootin stamp. I've been trying to get my hands on this stamp for such a long time and I've still not managed it, but a lovely lady um, saw one of my posts asking if anyone knew where I could get it. And she's very kindly lent me her stamp so that I can um, stamp myself some images to use. So um, it's really, really lovely of her. And I'm so touched that somebody was nice enough to do that for me. So I've added a couple of those to this layout too, and I'm painting them with uh, chipped sapphire and I think it's faded jeans as well to bring in some more blue. The, the um, chipped sapphire mixed media I've got in the back is looking very purple, so I wanted to bring in some more blue. So I'm using the faded jeans to go over these two white die cuts just to tie in all the colours together. So I've done the leaves and the die cuts, just roughly painted. There's still white spots on them. I didn't want them perfect by any means because this layout is quite a kind of messy looking layout. So I didn't want to paint anything too perfectly. So you will notice in the close-ups there are white bits and that's completely intentional just to kind of go with the feeling of this layout. Um, and that's me finished. So thank you very much for joining me today. I will leave you with some close-ups. In the description box below, you will find the links to all the other girls who are taking part in our hop today and working from the same layout. You will also find a link to our Mixed Media Frenzy Facebook group. If you're not in the group, I really do recommend you join if Mixed Media is your kind of thing or you're just interested in getting started with it. We love to see people sharing their Mixed Media layouts. And if you want to join in with our hops, obviously feel free. There's albums set up in the group for each of our weekly scrap lifts. So do have a play if you want to join in. So I'll leave all the details for that in the description box below and I shall see you next time.